Ayato arrives in the first half of patch 2.5, and today we're going to be doing a full breakdown on his kit and abilities. I'm also going to give some potential builds and also some preliminary damage using math and a medium amount of investment. Hello everybody, my name is Crypt13, welcome back to the channel. Let's talk Ayato. They actually animated the boba going up the straw. That right there is an insta pull. Anyway, let's go ahead and start with his role. Ayato is primarily an on-field damage dealer with his E skill, but he can also dish out some pretty decent damage with his elemental burst while off the field, and he also gives a normal attack damage boost to his teammates. He specializes in using flat damage bonus in order to increase the damage of his hydro-infused normal attacks. This may be how Ayato is designed, but you can of course play Ayato in any role you wish. Ayato's stats. His base attack is 299 at level 90, which is a little bit low. It's around Child's level and Kazuha's level. It's also slightly below the likes of Kaching and Yoimiya. Ayato's defense is 769. That's fairly average. He's just kind of in the middle of most 5-star characters. His HP is 13,715, base at level 90, and this is pretty good HP. The fourth highest out of all the characters that I checked, Hu Tao, Zhongli, and Jean are ahead of him. Ayato's ascension stat is crit damage. He'll get an extra 38.4% crit damage at level 90. Now let's go ahead and move on to his normal and charge attacks. Unfortunately, Ayato is not really going to specialize in his physical damage, so there's nothing special to talk about here besides the fact that it's a pretty cool animation and it's unfortunate that we won't really get to be seeing it too much. Honestly, I think that all of the sword Inazuma characters have really cool normal attack animations, especially when they sheath their swords. Ayato's E skill, the Kamisato R Kyoka. When you use this skill, you're going to shift backwards and leave behind a watery illusion. This is going to explode after 6 seconds, or if any opponents are nearby, dealing AoE Hydro damage. This is a little bit different from other summoning skills, since this one will explode immediately if it's within the range of an enemy. This is pretty nice since we'll get instant particles if we use this near an enemy, which in most cases we probably will. When he uses his E skill, he's going to enter the Taki Meguri Kanka state, which is very similar to Hu Tao's E skill as well. His normal attacks will now become AoE Hydro Damage attacks. This is a little bit different from Hu Tao because he actually gets an AoE increase. We'll really have to wait to see how good the AoE on his normal attacks become, because if it's pretty big, then he's going to benefit a lot from characters that help group up enemies. And also if the vertical hitbox is really good, he's going to be a pretty good pairing with Venti. The Takamaguri Kanka state is going to disable his charge attacks and plunging attacks, limiting him to only his normal attacks. His resistance to interruption is also going to get increased. So you can see how Ayato is very much focused on his normal attacks. The next part of this ability is that when he hits opponents, he's going to gain a stack of Namisen. Namisen increases the damage dealt by his normal attacks while in his E skill based off of his max HP. This has a maximum of 4 stacks, and 1 stack can be gained every 0.1 seconds, which is equivalent to 6 frames, which is very short, so you're going to have no problems gaining stacks in between attacks. You're pretty much going to get a stack every time you use your normal attack. At talent level 8, the increase in damage is 0.96% of his max HP. So if your Ayato has 19,000 HP, this is going to be a 730 flat damage bonus to his normal attacks. Also, since the wording of this says hit opponents, Namisen should still be granted even if we deal no damage. For example, if we hit shields from Abyss Mages. This ability is going to last 6 seconds with a 12 second cooldown time. The cooldown also begins immediately when you press the button. So after this ability is finished, there's going to be less than 6 seconds of downtime before it can be used again. The Water Illusion also lasts 6 seconds. But as mentioned earlier, you're probably going to be using this near enemies, so it's going to explode right away anyway. In terms of damage, his E skill is a 3 hit attack. The first one dealing 90.4% damage, 100.7% damage on the second hit, and 111% damage on the third hit. This is all at level 8. His Watery Illusion has a 173.5% damage scaling. In terms of energy, based off of the footage that we've seen so far, the Watery Illusion generates about 2 particles once it explodes and hits an enemy, and then from hitting enemies with our normal attacks, an extra 1 or 2 particles. So he's looking to generate about 3, maybe 4 particles during a 6 second rotation. 
Now let's move on to his Elemental Burst. This is very similar to Ganyu's Elemental Burst, except for it is now Hydro AoE damage. The pseudo auto targeting also behaves very similar to Ganyu's, so more enemies that are close means that the AoE from the Bloom Water can hit multiple enemies multiple times. This means lots of extra damage. Also, he will provide a normal attack damage bonus to characters within the field. At level 8, this increase is 18%. Also, the field looks pretty big. This is an 80 cost burst, so it's pretty expensive, meaning it has also a 20 second cooldown. The duration, however, is pretty long, a whole 18 seconds, so it's pretty much got full uptime if you can generate enough energy for him. In terms of damage, each Bloomwater Blade has 106.3% damage scaling at level 8. This ability synergizes pretty well with his E-Skill. You put his Elemental Burst Field down, and then you start using your normal attacks from your E-Skill. The internal cooldown of this ability seems to be a pretty standard internal cooldown, so it may not be that good of an off-field freeze enabler. It might still work, but since it can only apply Hydro once every 3 attacks or every 2.5 seconds, its reliability to freeze may not be as good as other characters. Moving on to his passive abilities. Kamitado Art Kyoka has two of the following properties. After it is used, he's going to instantly gain two Namisen stacks. And then, when the Water Illusion explodes, Ayato will gain the maximum amount of Namisen stacks possible. It's worded this way because he has a constellation that can increase the number of stacks he has. This passive effect pretty much always guarantees that Ayato will start with maximum amount of Namisen stacks whenever he starts his E-Skill rotation. His next passive is a Energy Regeneration passive. If Kamisato Ayato is not on the field, and his energy is less than 40, he is going to regenerate 2 energy for himself every second. So there are a couple things about this skill. Obviously, it is a conditional. He needs to have less than 40 energy in order to start regenerating energy for himself. Mihoyo seems to be hesitant on just giving characters lower energy burst costs. And some may say this is because they're trying to synergize him with Raiden. Or some may say because lower cost bursts are too strong. Who knows, it could be for both reasons. Or maybe neither. But anyway, this passive is an attempt to make his elemental burst have an effective lower cost. However, since it requires him to have less than 40 energy, it makes this passive a little bit worse than it actually could be. Because in most situations, you're going to cast his elemental burst first, and then his elemental skill. And so if we're doing this, he's going to gain most of his energy at the start of his E skill rotation. So by the time you rotate off of Ayato, and if his energy was greater than 40 from all the energy he gained while using his E skill, this passive is going to become redundant. However, on the other hand, if they didn't have this condition, this passive skill may be a little bit too strong. Anyway, this passive is to make it so that his elemental burst is a little bit easier to cast. Ayato's last passive skill is around cooking, and apparently he sucks at cooking, because every time you cook a dish perfectly, you have an 18% chance to receive an additional suspicious dish of the same type. And now what about weapon choices for Ayato? I'm gonna use Xing Chu as our dummy, since they are both Hydro Sword characters. The first weapon we're gonna take a look at is the Lion's Roar. The Lion's Roar gives us an extra damage boost if they're affected by either Pyro and Electro, so this is a pretty solid choice for a 4-star weapon if we're going to be running Ayato in a Taser team. And obviously, the higher refinement you have, the better this is gonna do. All the way up to refinement 5, we get an extra 36% extra damage bonus. And so if we do manage to R5 this weapon, this weapon does start to beat out the Black Sword if you decide to go with this type of playstyle. Also considering since this weapon gives us attack and no extra crit, the ratio of your crit is going to be much lower than, say, the Black Sword. Because with the Black Sword, you can end up using a crit damage circlet since this gives us extra crit rate. So even with a lower crit ratio, this weapon still does pretty good damage. Blacklift Longsword also works with Ayato, but it has the same problems as any other character that would use this weapon, and that's the passive skill needing to kill an enemy in order to get the buff. So if you can maintain the buff on this weapon, then yes, it's pretty good. But if you cannot maintain the weapon's passive skill, then this weapon is just pretty mediocre. Amenoma Kageuchi, this weapon will have low damage output, however, its energy regeneration passive skill is going to help incredibly with increasing 
Ayata's consistency. And if you're actually able to have his elemental burst being cast off of cooldown, you actually might end up doing more overall damage because his elemental burst gives him that extra normal attack damage bonus. So although the damage numbers coming out of this weapon might be low, because it helps you cast your elemental burst, your DPS might actually be better than some other 4-star weapons. The Black Sword, the Battle Pass weapon, this one is just a solid weapon overall because it gives you a lot of crit rate and then an extra normal attack and charge attack damage here by 20%. The normal attack is the one that's really going to help us out. And also healing is just kind of nice as well. You can run other weapons on him as well, like the Iron Sting, the alley flash, the favonia sword, and the flute, but they're not going to be as good as the other weapons that I just mentioned. For example, the favonia sword, it's going to give us low damage, but again, high consistency, kind of like the Amanoma Kaguchi because it gives a whole bunch of energy recharge. The elemental mastery from the alley flash isn't going to be particularly useful since Ayato is going to be applying hydro with his normal attacks pretty quickly. So that means if you run a vape, Shangling team, Shangling is definitely going to be the one that is triggering the elemental reactions instead of Ayato. An extra damage bonus though is always kind of nice, but since the substat here isn't too useful for us, it's not as good as the other weapons. The flute just gives us a whole bunch of attack percentage and not much crit, so it's low crit and not a lot of extra damage bonus. Unlike the Lion's Roar, which gives us a bunch of damage bonus, is not going to be as good. It just kind of gives us this flat amount of extra attack damage whenever we hit surrounding opponents. Festering Desire is not too good since his elemental skill is not an actual damaging elemental skill. And then Cinnabar Spindle, don't even think about it because Ayato does not scale off of defense. Prototype Rancor is more for physical based characters, which Ayato is not. Iron Sting kind of falls under the same reasoning as the Alley Flash. The Elemental Mastery doesn't help us out too much, but hey, extra elemental damage does increase our damage a little bit, but obviously just not as well as the other weapons that I mentioned earlier. Now, in terms of five stars, I think there are three weapons that are going to work really well for him. The Jade Cutter, his signature weapon, the Haran Gepaku Futsu, and the Mist Splitter Reforged. All of them actually end up dealing pretty similar damage, and each one kind of excels ever so slightly in one area over the other. So let's first start with the Jade Cutter. The Jade Cutter is kind of the middle ground between the Mist Splitter and the Haran Gapaku Futsu. The normal attack damage and the elemental burst and elemental skill damage is in between both of his signature weapon and the Mist Splitter. And so even though this weapon does give us an extra HP percentage boost, it still doesn't do better normal attack damage than his signature weapon. That being said, the Jade Cutter is only slightly worse than his signature weapon in terms of overall damage. This is because elemental burst damage from the Jade Cutter actually does more than his signature weapon. However, normal attack damage is worse than his signature weapon. And in terms of percentage damage difference on his normal attacks, I'm talking around 6% to 5% damage difference. And then when we're talking about elemental burst damage, we're saying 7% to 9% damage difference in favor of the Jade Cutter. Damage from his elemental burst, of course, is going to depend on how many enemies you're facing. So normal tax is going to be your more consistent damage dealer. Now talking about his signature weapon, his signature weapon gives him the most normal attack damage between the Jade Cutter and the Mist Splitter. However, in terms of elemental burst damage, it is the lowest out of all of those weapons. And again, the percentage difference here I'm talking about is less than a 10% damage difference between these weapons. And now for the Mist Splitter, it's going to give you the least amount of normal attack damage compared to his signature weapon and the Jade Cutter. However, in terms of elemental burst damage, it's going to be the strongest. The normal attack damage difference between his signature weapon and the Mist Splitter is somewhere around the 7% and 8% mark in favor of his signature weapon. And in terms of elemental burst damage, we're talking about 15.4% in favor of the Mist Splitter. I'm again going to note that most of Ayato's damage is going to come from his normal attacks, so even though the percentage difference between elemental burst is higher, I would place more value on his normal attacks over his elemental burst. Of course, this depends on how many enemies you're fighting and how close they are, because if you can hit multiple bloom waters at once, then the damage does increase. Moving on to artifact sets now. A lot of his artifact sets deal very similar damage. The artifact sets that you can run on Ayato are 4-piece Gladiator, 
four-piece Heart of Depth, the four-piece Echoes, which is the new artifact set, and then you can also run a two-piece Heart of Depth with a two-piece attack percentage, or you can run a double two-piece attack percentage set. You can also theoretically run a Blizzard set as well if you want to bring along a Cryo Enabler and run some sort of Freeze team. This is going to make it so that you don't have to build that much crit rate on Ayato and just go all in on crit damage. The assumptions used for these artifact comparisons is we're looking only at crit damage, Ayato is running an attack percent, hydro damage, and crit damage artifact pieces. He's got maximum Nami-san stacks, and his crit ratio is 69.3% crit rate and 180% crit damage, and also his elemental burst, giving him 18% attack percent bonus, is active. So first, comparing Gladiator and Heart of Depth, their normal attack damage is very, very similar. Four-piece Gladiator just ever so slightly pulls ahead. And I'm talking 1 to 3% damage difference between normal attacks. The Water Illusion and the Elemental Burst damage is slightly in favor of Heart of Depth, but I'm talking less than 1% here. If you decide to go 2-piece Heart of Depth and a 2-piece Attack Percentage, your normal attack damage is going to be lower than the 4-piece set bonuses. However, your Water Illusion and your Elemental Burst damage is going to be the strongest. The normal attack damage difference between a 4-piece Gladiator is about 8 to 9%. And now his dedicated artifact set, the Echoes of Offering. This artifact set is a little bit confusing when you first read it. However, what you should just know is that on average, you will get the buff from this artifact set about 50% of the time, each time you use a normal attack. In other words, this basically means that every other attack is going to get buffed by this artifact set. So when you are not buffed by this artifact set, its damage output is the lowest out of all of the artifact sets. However, when you do have the buff, it is absolutely without a doubt the highest damaging artifact set. And now in terms of damage difference, when you actually hit the buff, we're talking 27.6% damage difference. That's pretty huge. However, when you don't hit the buff, we're talking a 16.6% damage difference in favor of the other sets. And so if we end up just taking the average, the four-piece Echoes ends up being somewhere around 7 to 9% better when it comes to normal attack damage. And then when it comes to Elemental Burst and Elemental Skill damage, it is going to do worse than the four-piece Heart of Depth, but it's going to do exactly the same as a four-piece Gladiator. So yes, on average, the new artifact set will be better, but at the end of the day, it is a total coin flip whether or not it does end up being better. You could get unlucky some runs, and sometimes you could get really lucky, and it ends up being even better. So here's my recommendation. I would go for the new artifact set if you really do want to min-max your eye and also if you are a Xiao main since those two artifacts are going to share the same domain. Otherwise, it's going to be a much better use of your resin if you just stick to a four-piece gladiator set or a four-piece heart of depth set. Four-piece heart of depth also gives some blizzard strayer set pieces and those go really well on any cryo character. Because with the new artifact set domain, Xiao's specialized artifact set doesn't really work on any other character besides himself. So if you don't have a Xiao, you just run the risk of getting an artifact set that you just can't use on any other character. Thank you guys so much for watching, especially if you made it this far. I wish you best of luck to everyone who is attempting to pull for Ayato. And if you like this video or if this video helped you out, definitely drop a like on the video. Drop a comment on how you're planning to build your Ayato and what teams you're planning to run for him. Consider subscribing to my channel and until next time, I will see you guys later.